I'm going to show you what I do to get the brevis out of those shells. So we've got two out. Try to get the net underneath them. This is just from Ikea, a little bottle brush. The other thing is, this is free. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, I'm going to be showing you what I did last week when I prepared the Neolamprologus Lay Loopy tank. There was a lot of footage that I filmed and I didn't show you how I prepared the tank before I started aquascaping it. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at how I moved the Neolamprologus Brevis Sunspot out of the aquarium and what I did to clean that aquarium up. So if you haven't seen last week's video and you wanna see how the aquascaping turned out, I recommend you watch last week's video first before you watch this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the Brevis Sunspot Trio out of this tank and pop them into this tank. So this tank has nothing in it except some albino bristlenose catfish to keep it clean. And I'll just go in there as a holding tank just for the day and uh, just with their shells. So just pick the shells out. The brevis will go into their specific shells and I'll just pop them in that tank. So that's where the parents will go. And then the fry will go into their own tank, uh, most likely with their other brothers and sisters in this aquarium here. So I'm just gonna do that right now. All I've done is open the lid and the male has already gone in the shell with his female and the other female is in this shell here. So it's as easy as just picking up the shells with the fish in them, leaving the water in the shell and popping the shells in the aquarium. So the first part is done. You see the male at the entrance of this shell here and there is a female in the shell. You can see the tail, her tail coming, she's coming out. Um, and it's as easy as that to move your shellies. You don't have to use a net. Uh, the issue comes when you want to catch the shellies to sell uh, you don't want to sh sell them inside the shell because the purchaser won't be able to see what's in the shell you want to show them the fish and uh, separating them from the shell is a little more tricky so the next step in this process is to get these brevis out of this aquarium and the brevis you see here are fry that were born in this aquarium now I'm gonna have to get the shells out of here and there might be some brevis in those shells. Now I'm gonna show you what I do to get the brevis out of those shells. I'm gonna move the rocks out of here to make it a little bit easier to catch the brevis. The first thing I'm gonna do is move the shells out uh, because if I start moving rocks out first, that's gonna scare the hell out of them and they're gonna go into the shell. So this is a breeder box and I sometimes use this to try and separate my shell dwelling cichlids from their shells. Now you don't need to use a breeder box to do this, any container will do. Best to try and raise the shell up off the bottom of the aquarium that you're trying to extract the cichlid from. I found that this sometimes does work. Just pop the shell in this holding container and just basically wait for the cichlid to come out of the shell. You can also use a bucket, place the shell high up say on a rock that's in that bucket and as shell dwelling cichlids like to be on the bottom of their aquarium, when they come out of the shell, because the shell is so high up in the holding tank, they're gonna get out of the shell and then try to find shelter at the bottom of that holding tank. I'm gonna start filling this little breeder box up just simply by turning on the air pump. So this air pump is gonna suck water up this uh, pre-filter, up this pipe. It's gonna overflow into this holding aquarium. Then this will slowly fill up and then overflow back out into the aquarium. So these breeder boxes are quite handy, they're quite useful. You don't need to buy these to extract your shell dwelling cichlids out of the shells. I'm just purely using this as an attempt to get them out of the shells. I'm going to turn this air pump on now and you'll see how it works. So there you go. Air is being pumped into this pipe that's drawing water up through this pre-filter, up this pipe, up here, out these drain lines, into this little box. And this will just continue to fill up until it reaches this point here. And at that point, it's gonna overflow down this little ramp back into the aquarium. See, I could fill this up with some water and speed up the process, but just to show you how it, how it works. Uh, it also comes with a lid. Brevis are very hard cichlids to catch. They have a very deceptive way of swimming. Yeah, this might be a bit of a challenge, so this might take a while. So I'm just gonna get the shells that I know have uh, brevis in them. Keep the water in the shell. And just pop the shell inside here. So we've already got a brevis out of the shell. See that on camera. 
where we got two out. Two out of their shells. It's working quite well already. There's no other shells. So this aquarium is going to get a complete aquascape, a complete re aquascape. So um, I'm going to take the rock out. This rock is beautiful, has beautiful quartz marbling through it. I love this rock, so I'm just going to get it really good clean. Um, and when I re aquascape this aquarium, it might be the feature stone in this aquarium again. Actually, what I am going to do with that stone is put it in one of my bristlenose catfish tanks and let them clean it for me. So you're killing two birds with one stone. One, you're feeding your fish good quality food because it's algae, and bristlenose catfish obviously love algae. And two, you're getting it cleaned for free. The bristlenose catfish are doing it for you. Now, if you look over here, we've got another brevis sunspot that's come out of the shell. So I'm going to get it, try not to scare it too much. Don't want it to jump out. Just go into the net. You just have this kind of weird angle to me going up to this aquarium, popping the fish straight in here. And now I can get my net and start catching the brevis fly out. As I said, the brevis fly are pretty hard to catch, so you want to reduce the amount of the distractions you have in the aquarium to catch them. Now, what I, what I like to do when I'm catching my cichlids is try to get the net underneath them and scoop them up. It might not always be possible where they are in the aquarium and lengthening the net. You might sometimes find it easier to just bring them to the front of the aquarium and let them swim into the net just like that, and uh, away you go. Now, they love to jump these guys, so um, try to get them into the middle of the net and then pop them in the aquarium and let them swim out. So there you go. All out. They pretty much refuse to go into the, into the net. And when they do, they like to jump. They really like to jump and they end up on the edges of, these, of the net, which is quite frustrating. And that is it. That's all the fry out. Next thing to do is gravel back this aquarium because it is filthy. Well, actually, the next thing to do is close off the return line. I don't want this water flowing back into the sump because I'm going to suck it all out. And uh, I'm going to clean the glass really well and then we'll gravel back. I'm turning off the return line because I don't want this water going into the other aquariums in the fish room. I want this tank isolated now. So I'm going to make this tank, this tank is going to get pretty filthy now with what I'm about to do to it. So I'm going to scrape off all the algae from the glass. I'm not going to put bristlenose catfish in here to do that because the lay loopy. I mean, I could and then I could wait 24 hours. I could put bristlenose catfish in here and let them clean the glass. Should I do that? Okay. So if I do that, this is the problem. Like I come up with these ideas as I go and I start to rethink things. Now what I'm going to do is just clean it myself. I mean, I just want to get this done. And the longer it takes, I can't move the lay loopy in here. So you're just hearing me thinking out loud now. So the benefit of putting the bristlenose catfish in this aquarium is that that gets some good food, some beneficial food, some algae. And it will save me having to scrape off the algae. The disadvantage of that is the brevis are in their holding tank for longer, for at least 24 hours without any sand bed. Uh, they're, in, they're in a holding tank just with some shells, no uh, uh, other shelter for them. So that could be quite stressful for those guys. The other thing is I want to get the lay loopy out of the aquarium that they're in and I want to pop, pop them in here today. So rather than waiting a day or two for the bristlenose catfish to eat and clean the algae uh, off the glass, I'm just going to do it myself. So uh, let's get cracking and do it. Okay, got my trusty credit card here. Uh, and I am going to use that to scrape the algae off the glass. Uh, I'd rather credit card over a blade or magnetic algae cleaners because this is pretty soft. You can't scratch your glass with a credit card. Uh, and we have at least a, a, a less likely chance of doing that. And with a magnetic algae cleaner, you can get your gravel, your sand, Cool filter sand caught up between the plates of the magnet algae cleaner and then scratch your glass. You, you, you end up doing that if you get too close. So see how close I am to, to the sand bed right now? If I was to do that with a magnetic algae cleaner, this sand bed will get caught up in, the, out, in between the magnets and then I'll start scratching the glass. So I don't like using those devices, I just find it easier with an old credit card 
The other thing is, this is free, you know, and if you're finding a use for your old stuff. I'll just show you what else I've got here that I can use to clean out. On the surface, they look great. It looks like they're going to clean a lot more surface area than a little credit card because of the size of these things. And they do have one sharp edge. But the problem with these things is they don't have a flat edge. It misses a lot. So I don't find that they're as good as the credit card, unfortunately, even though they can clean a, uh, a wider area faster. This surface here isn't as flat and straight as an old credit card is. So an old credit card uh, does the job a little easier, uh, which is unfortunate because those things would be fantastic for cleaning aquariums um, because they're large size and they're cheap. They're just from the reject shop, doll store. So I'm going to show you how I clean the algae off the silicon as well. Because there is algae on the silicon in this tank, that's quite unsightly. But you don't want to get too close to the silicon with the credit card because you'll end up peeling off the silicon. So I'm going to use this to clean the algae off the silicon. This is just from Ikea, a little bottle brush. Uh, it looks like a toilet brush, but it is actually for uh, cleaning bottles. And I'm just going to lightly scrub the silicon area. Not push it too hard. And then I'll start vacuuming the sand there. Now as I vacuum the sand bed, you're going to see the pull filter sand go higher and higher up the vacuum. So what I do is I keep the hose with my hand like that. That stops the water flow and the sand bed goes back down to the bottom and I don't suck up again the sand bed. Okay, I've decided to stop the siphon on this tank now. have it guys, how I prepared the aquarium for that Leon Lamprologus Leilupi Aquascape. I really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.